chilly morning. Nice to see everybody over here. The lesson this morning, as we run and put it on the board, heirs of God and fellow heirs of Christ. And the lesson is, really, what does that mean? What does it mean to be an heir of God <coughs> or a fellow heir of Christ? I'm going to start the lesson with two scriptures that we used at the end of last week. And for those of you who were here last week, you remember we spoke about God, the Father, and His Son. And what does God mean to us? What does Christ, what does He mean to us in the lesson last week? And we finished off with this particular verse. Ephesians 1.5 says, He, that is God, He predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to Himself according to the kind intention of His will. And I want to just clarify something there again. There are so many people in the world that speak about, the, or take this particular verse, as predestination. In other words, you have been predestined to go to heaven. This particular verse said, God predestined us to adoptions as sons through Jesus Christ. In other words, God predestined before creation that He will give us a way of going to heaven to have eternal salvation. He did not predestine us sitting here and say, oh well, I like you and I predestined whether you want to or not, you are going to go to heaven. And the poor old soul running out there or maybe somebody else sitting here, is not predestined to go to heaven. It's absolute, absolute nonsense that people, and there are millions of people who believe that, and there are thousands of churches who will say it is predestined by God that the individual will go to heaven or not. All that God is saying here, because of my kind will, my kind intention, because of my mercy, because of my grace, I'm going to give the world a way to come unto me, the Father. And that way will be through His Son, Jesus Christ. That was predestined, not the individual. But we're going to look at the scriptures today. And find out how do I obtain eternal salvation. He predestined us to adoption. And if I want to be adopted by somebody, I have to take on their name. For me to inherit what they have. I can't inherit what Chris has. Because I'm not his son. And so if I, through their love and their kindness, they want to adopt me as a son, now I become part of the family. And so we will read about that as we go through it. Romans 8, 16, 17 says, The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So yes, the Immediately we are children of God. Immediately now the word adoption becomes just a little bit more understandable. Because we are children of God. Now, does that mean anybody who believes in God becomes a child of God? Does that mean anybody that throws up his hands and says, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, is a child of God? How do we become a child of God? How do I become a child of Chris and Sally? Do I just stand and say, oh, Chris, Sally, I love you. Oh, I'm now a child of theirs. It doesn't work that way. But unfortunately, 
unfortunately in the world today, Satan comes along. And he keeps on playing this card, but God loves you. And as long as you believe in him, he will accept you as his son. And it's so against the scriptures. And we will read that as we go on. Verse 16, verse 17 says, And if children, heirs also, heirs of God, and fellow heirs of Christ, or with Christ, if indeed we suffer with Him, in order that we may also be glorified with Him. We spoke about this last week. The whole idea says, and if children we become heirs of God and fellow heirs of Jesus Christ, so that we may also be glorified with Him. Now that's important. Because if I become part of the family, then I will then be glorified with that family. But if I'm not part of the family, I cannot be glorified with that family. And it's very important for us to understand that. If my understanding of the scriptures is not correct, it doesn't matter how good a person I am. It doesn't matter what I believe in. If it's not what Jesus has asked me to believe in, I cannot become an heir of His whatever He's going to leave me. We look at Galatians 4 verse 1 to 6. We're going to read against what we read earlier on. Now I say, as long as the heir is a child, he does not differ at all from a slave, although he is the owner of everything. And just to explain it a little bit, if I'm the heir of whatever my father is going to leave me, I'm in his family. But if there's a slave, he is not part of the family. He will get nothing. But now what? My father, who I'm now a family of, he can change his will. And I'm not an heir all of a sudden of what he is to leave me. And so he says, really, as a child, I'm an heir. As a slave, I can also be an heir if I become part of Jesus Christ's body. <coughs> Verse 2 says, but he is under guardian and manages until the day set by the Father. So also we, while we were children, were held in bondage under the elemental things of the world. But when the fullness of the time came, God sent forth his Son. That's it. If you do not believe in Jesus Christ, you cannot make it. You will inherit and I will inherit nothing. Remember the beginning? Write the first uh, scripture. He, which is God the Father, predestined us as adoption, as sons, through Jesus Christ. That's it. There's no other way. And we go on and he says... Fullness of time and God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order that he might redeem us. Those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba Father, my Father, He has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts. So, if I don't have Christ's Spirit inside of me, I cannot become part of this adoption. 
I can, it doesn't matter how good a person I am. And I can blame other people and whatever. If I don't have Jesus Christ's spirit inside of me, I am not part of this adoption process. Verse 5 of that same, it says, In order that he might redeem the slave or the, 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 the child who is already part of it, Christ still has to redeem us, them, to become part of his kingdom. Once I am part of his kingdom, now I'm eligible to become an heir of him, a fellow heir of Jesus Christ and an heir of God. No other way. We must understand that. But now listen to what John, listen carefully now. John 1 verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right. To become children of God to those who believe in his name for as many as have received Jesus he gives them the right nobody else has that right it doesn't matter what your background is but if I want to be part of this adoption process if I want to be part of the heir, the inheritance, we're going to look in a minute, what, what do I inherit? I only have that right when I become part of the family. That's a big statement, that. That's a very big statement. Remember, Walter made mention of it in his prayer. There may come a time that I stand before God, I stand before Jesus Christ and He says to me, go away from me, I do not know you. In other words, what He's saying, Danny, you have no right in my kingdom. But Lord, I went to church, I sang, and I said, I know I sang the best and the loudest. And Jesus says, go away from me. I do not know you because everything that you did you did for yourself and you did it in the sense of saying well this is how I think Christianity should be and you did everything for yourself go away from me you have no right in my kingdom so we look at Galatians 3 26 27 says for you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ, for all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. And here now this starts becoming the essence of our lives. Sometimes, for those of us who have been baptized many, many years ago, we have forgotten sometimes why. It is because I want to inherit heaven. I have to be a part of the, the Christ family to inherit. Jesus Christ is God's son. God says, unless you work through my son and you take on his name, you inherit nothing with me. Nothing. So I've got to make a decision in my life. As we did make a decision, I want to inherit. Well, then God says, only those who work through my son, Jesus Christ, has the right to become sons of mine. 1 Peter 1, chapter 1, verse 3 and 4 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His great mercy, who according to His great mercy, 
has caused us to be born again to a living hope. That is why we are baptized. Because it is a living hope. I don't die, go to the ground and disappear and the worms eat me up and that's it. I live. After death, I this baptism, having put on Jesus Christ, has given us a living hope. That living hope is to be adopted by Jesus Christ to be with Him forever. That's my hope. <laughs> you know, I, I, I cannot understand it. Preachers who have been in the world for how many years they know the Bible and they were saying, for you have been saved by grace. Boom! And they stop just there. And they forget to read further through faith. Through faith in Jesus Christ. If I read this, God says, through faith in Jesus Christ we will be saved. Not by grace. The grace, yes, this is the, the way that God said, this is how you get to heaven. Through my son, Jesus Christ. It's your will. You decide whether you want to put on Jesus Christ. You decide whether you want to take on his name. If that's my decision, if I don't want to take on his name, then I can walk with my dog as we see this lady walking with a dog in the pram. And she takes the pram and the dog for a walk. That's her decision. My decision. Do I want to be a son? A daughter of Jesus Christ. Yes. Well, so I take the Bible. I take the Bible and I go read it. How do I become part of this family? And Jesus says to me, unless you're baptized into my name, and in the baptism you take on my name, you, you lose your name. You now become a Christian. A Christ-like like me, says Christ. Take your name and throw it away. You see, because if we look at how we sometimes live and the name that we stand for and we compare that name and we compare Jesus Christ's name, our name just falls away. Because we cannot compare with Christ's name. Verse 4 of 1 Peter 1, 3 and 4 says, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. If we had to take heaven, if this was heaven, and there's some of these empty chairs, it means it is, they are reserved for others still to come into his kingdom they reserved he god has reserved a place for us all that i have to do to obtain that place is to remain in his son jesus christ no other way no other way you know we read earlier on about being born again and it's a term which is thrown about so easily I spoke to somebody the other day and I felt so, I want to I felt sorry for this person, but I wanted to help him to get to understand. He says, I'm a born again Christian. And I said to him, what does that mean? And he said, well, I've given my heart to God. And I wondered, but we didn't have time. I wanted to say, but that's not being born again. Remember when Nicodemus came to Christ? And he said, you know, I, I see what you're doing. I want to follow you. And then Christ says to Nicodemus, unless you're born of the water in, uh, and the spirit. John, what, chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. Unless you're born of the water and the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. You cannot. 
I always find it quite amazing. Nicodemus being a learned person made a stupid statement. He says, does that mean I'm going to go back into my mother's womb? And I can imagine Christ looking and saying, you know, honestly, Nicodemus, you're supposed to be intelligent. Surely you can work this one out. But in that same way, the world that Christ will look at the world and say, surely, I've given you intelligence. You should be able to work out what I mean. When I say you need to be born in me again to a living hope. And so Romans 8, 16 and 17 says, which we read earlier on. And if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, since we suffer with him in order that we may be glorified with him. My question I ask myself in this week, what do I inherit? If Scott had to ask me and Christy had to ask me, what did I inherit when I die? Well, it's not much. Sorry to say that to you. I might inherit my bulldogs. But there's not much else going to be available. But when I die, listen to this. I inherit God. I inherit God. I inherit His Son, Jesus Christ. I inherit heaven. I inherit the new Jerusalem. Imagine that inheritance and compare that to four bulldogs. Because that's what they can inherit. But when I inherit being the son of God, I inherit him and Jesus Christ and what they stand for. Martin, Andres, what did they inherit him? They run with God. Compare their inheritance right now. We get up in the morning, we complain, oh, it's cold. Andres and Martha says, it's wonderful here. I don't worry about being cold. Listen what the next scripture says. Revelation 21, 1 to 4, and I'm only going to read verse 3. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he shall dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be among them. Can you imagine what we would feel like right now if we hear the doors opening, I'm humanizing a little bit. We hear the doors open and I look. And there stands God. And you will see the expression on my face and you will all turn around and we will look at God and His Son, Jesus Christ. That's what we inherit. That is what Andres and Martin has inherited. But we've still got to get, we've still get hold of that inheritance. It's coming. Why? Because it has been reserved for us. But we've got to fight for it. We've got to fight for it. We can't just say, well, I'm saved. What you say, forever saved, says the world. And the world loves it. Oh, so I don't have to do too much. I'm saved. Christ predestined me. So I don't have to do too much. It doesn't work that way. <clears throat> Verse 4 of Revelation 1 to 4 said, And he shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more mourning. There will no, no more death. No more crying. No more pain. There is happiness. Imagine if Martin or Andres could come down right now and he says to us, do you know what I have seen in heaven? What would they say? They would most probably say, you know, up in heaven, in God's throne, around his throne, there is no more lying. People don't lie up there. There is no more filth. The filthy things that the human race does on earth. There's nothing of that. There are no more children being raped. 
No more children being hurt. There is no more sadness. Why? Because God is appointed as Jesus Christ of all things. We are fellow heirs and so we inherit perfection. We inherit perfection. We inherit holiness. We inherit absolute righteousness. We inherit completeness. And because we inherit those things, we share in the glory of God. Think about that. Because earlier on it says, we will inherit and share in the glory of God. Why would I not want that? But we've just got to watch out for this. That we don't allow the world to overcome us. The trials and the tribulations, the loneliness may be. That we don't allow the world to overcome us and we don't allow Satan to do one of two things. One, he will say, ah man, listen, that guy shouting the odds up there, it doesn't have to be like that. You, you can do it in another way. You can, what, there are lots of ways to go to heaven. You don't have to be baptized. You don't have to follow the word of God. Then there are lots of other ways. Do you believe? Yes, I believe. Do you love? Yes, I love God. Does God love you? Yes, I know God. Don't be, you don't have to be baptized. Christ says, unless you put on my name, I do not regard you as part of my family. As much as I love Reinhardt, is he part of my family? Scott and Christy, by birth, by law. But when it comes to Christ's family, now all of a sudden we're brothers and sisters in Christ because we have all taken on his name, Jesus Christ, Christian. The Son of God. Galatians 6. 17 says this about Paul, the great apostle Paul. I bear in my body the brand marks of Jesus. Have any of you been whipped? Have any of you been shipwrecked? All those things that happened to Paul. Let me ask you this. Do any of us bear the signs of stress and pressure? And things going wrong in our lives, yes, we bear the signs of Jesus Christ. Because to be a Christian, you have to stand up for Jesus Christ. When there's a group of people, and they start swearing, telling bad jokes, and say, but I'm sorry, I feel uncomfortable. It's because I don't think Jesus is here in this kind of situation. I will take myself and remove myself, and then they can point fingers, oh, yeah, 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 one of these old Bible punches, whatever the case may be. I would rather be recognized by Jesus Christ than about my, with my friends, who mean a lot to me on earth, but in heaven, they mean nothing to me. Unless I find myself with these friends, but we're not in heaven. I've got all my friends, but I look up and I see there is heaven, and I'm not there, not like my friends. And I said, oh, why did I listen to my friends? I ask a question. <coughs> when we go to Romans 8, 18, here is a question I want to ask you. And I'm asking every single one of you here today, myself included, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Do I, am, am I more wanting to inherit the world, my friends and what they stand for, and, and the sufferings and, and the pressure of this, is it worth it to have all of this, but I inherit heaven? I inherit God. I inherit Jesus Christ. And if I may humanize again, 
I inherit the opportunity to go sit under a tree and listen to God Almighty. That's what I inherit. Romans 8.18 8 says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed with before me or to us. This is nothing to what I'm going to receive one day. To be a bond servant of Jesus Christ, Paul had to make that decision. And in the last scripture that we're going to read now, listen what Paul says. Galatians 2 verse 20. We know this one well. For I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and delivered himself up for me. My question, Paul, was he a Christian? Yes. Why? Because he took on Jesus Christ in baptism. He clothed himself with Jesus. He took him on and now he is a son of Jesus Christ. And now he thinks, what am I going to inherit? I'm going to inherit my king, my savior, my uh, 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 fellow heir, Jesus Christ. And I'm going to inherit God, his father. Because God says, there where I am, you will be my people. And I will be your father. And I will dwell amongst you. Have you ever thought of that? That is what is waiting for us. If I am a son, a daughter of Jesus Christ. Think about it as we stand and we sing our song for the Lord's day.